Welcome back to Donna Depp Movie Explainer. Today, I'm going to show a 2019 supernatural horror film called In the Tall Grass. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Siblings Becky and Cal are driving their car across the open country to San Diego. Feeling nauseous, pregnant Becky asks Cal to pull over near an abandoned church. Cal stops the car and Becky barely makes it out to throw up. Just as they were about to hit the road, Becky hears a cry for help coming from the tall grass. Another voice calls out to them, this time a woman and apparently the boy's mother. She calls the boy by his name, Tobin, and tells him to stop calling out. Cal enters the tall grass to rescue Tobin and Becky follows after him. Becky starts to feel something weird about the whole situation. Frustrated, Cal tries running through the field trying to locate his sister. He stumbles into the mud, tired and gasping for air. As he looks up, he sees the remains of a rotting dog. Becky soon meets another man in the tall grass who introduces himself as Ross. He is also looking for his wife, Natalie, his son, Tobin, and their dog, Freddie. Meanwhile, Cal finally runs into the boy named Tobin. Tobin tells Cal how his family ended up in the field in the first place. They followed a man's voice into the tall grass and had been stuck ever since. Cal asks Tobin how long they have been wandering through the field. The boy doesn't know. He tells Cal about the rock. The rock lets you hear the tall grass and the tall grass knows everything. Cal has no choice but to ask the boy for help. Tobin is eager to help his new friend and tells Cal to stay close to him as they go look for Becky. Becky follows Ross into the tall grass and loses him. Feeling the panic rise up to her chest, Becky frantically searches for the man. A shadow then jumps up from behind her, clasping its hand on her mouth and stifling her screams. Cal follows Tobin to a clearing where a gigantic rock sits in the center. Cal walks towards it and sees the symbols carved into it. A loud cry coming from the field interrupts his trance. Travis stops his truck at the same church where Cal parked their car. He spots a paperback novel belonging to Becky at the side of the road. Ignoring the uneasy feeling in his chest, Travis ventures out into the field. He soon stumbles into Tobin. Tobin calls Travis by his name, leaving Travis confused. Tobin insists that they have met before but Travis could only look up to the boy in shock. Ultimately, the boy leads Travis to Becky's rotting corpse. Tobin watches from a distance as the man shudders and cries beside the corpse. Back at the church, Tobin stands towards the tall grass, completely terrified as he holds onto his dog and calls out to his mother, saying that a man is calling out from the field. His parents follow him to the field and immediately get lost. As morning breaks, the siblings arrive at the side of the field and enter the tall grass to Tobin's cries. Feeling hopeless and lost, Travis hears Becky's voice from a distance and he calls out for them. Travis finally catches up to Tobin, Becky, and Cal. Travis tells them that they've been missing for two months. Suddenly, a phone call interrupts their talk. A distorted woman's voice erupts from the phone giving them a solemn warning before cutting off. They continue their trek until Becky screams in pain as blood drips from her thighs. A horrifying vision of death and sacrifice play through her mind, so horrifying that it makes her pass out. Ross meets them and leads them back to the clearing with the rock. The atmosphere turns ominous as Ross marvels at the entity in front of them. He tells them that the way out is to touch the rock. Suddenly a woman appears from the tall grass. It's Natalie, Tobin's mom. She shields her son as she warns her husband to stay away from them. As she looks over at Becky, she gasps. She insists that she saw Becky and that she was dead. Ross insists that Natalie's only confused. Becky grabs her stomach from the pain and another vision passes through her mind. She sees the grass people and Ross with milky white eyes and a sinister smile on his face. As Ross turns his back on them Travis tackles him to the ground and starts punching him. Ross soon gains the upper hand and breaks Travis's shoulder. Natalie pushes her son to run and gets caught in the arms of her crazy husband. Ross finally tips over the edge and crushes his wife's head with his own bare hands. The group runs back into the field and Freddy leads them towards a building. Travis apologizes to Becky but lashes at her brother. Fed up with everything, Cal lands a punch on his face. Their fight is cut short by Ross who is now banging at the door. The group climbs up to the top of the building and barricades the door. Cal and Travis spot the dog, Freddy, as it walks through the empty parking lot. The dog suddenly disappears and then reappears at the main road near the church. Travis concludes that it must be the way out. Ross manages to open the door as they climb down through the fire escape. Ross catches up to Cal and grabs him by the shoulder. He brings out Cal's worst fear, that he'd be left out once the baby is born and Travis and Becky will end up together. Cal runs away from his grasp and back into the field but is soon tackled by Ross. As Cal turns to his side, 
he sees his own mangled corpses staring back at him with their soulless eyes. A final chill runs through his spine as Ross chokes him to death. Travis wakes up and goes back to the field to look for Becky. Beaten and bruised, he thanks Becky for trying to keep her baby and that their baby deserves to live. Suddenly, Ross grabs Becky from behind. Becky is terrified and exhausted, but with the remaining energy she has left, she reaches for the pair of scissors on the ground and stabs Ross's left eye. She pushes herself back up and runs until she finds herself surrounded by the grass people she saw in her vision. They close in on her, defying her attempts of escape, and carry her against her will. Becky wakes up and pulls out her cell phone and attempts to call herself, revealing herself to be the woman who gave them the ominous warning earlier. As she drops her phone in pain, she sees the carvings on the rock, bearing the prophecy of her own pregnancy. The ground breaks before her, revealing the roots underneath the rocks. Thousands of babies, dead and alive, wriggled in the roots beneath her, all crying for help. Becky screams at the horrifying sight of what seems like the fate of her daughter. With one last push and scream, she passes out. The full moon shines above her as Becky wakes up in a dazed state. Cal is feeding her something. Betty asks what she's eating and his brother responds that it's only grass. As the blood drops on the ground, Becky soon realizes that something isn't right. She turns her head and spots her dead daughter. He's been feeding her the baby all this time. Petrified, she turns back to Cal, who is now Ross. Travis finds Becky near the rock. He taunts Ross to come out. A grinning Ross appears from behind landing a punch on his face. He pins him on the ground but Travis gains the upper hand and kicks him off. Ross retrieves a broken bone from the mud and slams it onto Travis's face before finally stabbing him in the stomach. Suddenly, Becky rises up with her last ounce of energy and strikes Ross's right eye. This buys them a bit of time as Travis hits back at him by smashing his face against the rock. A struggle ensues and Tobin watches in horror as Travis finally strangles his father to death. Clutching his dead girlfriend, Travis sobs. He glances back behind him and knows that there's only one way out of here. He finally places his palm on the surface and is gripped into a vision. His eyes roll back as he sees the hundreds of paths that could take them outside. Travis leads Tobin to an escape path. He turns to him and gives the boy Becky's necklace. He grabs the boy and pulls him up towards the grass. Once he's down, Tobin finds himself inside a room. He walks towards the solitary door and realizes that he's inside the church. He makes his way just in time to see Becky's car pulling up the side of the road. Tobin runs towards them with all his might and screams at them. He tells them to get inside the car and to not go in the tall grass. Seeing that they're not convinced, he pulls out the necklace that Travis gave him. Becky asks where he got the necklace and Tobin says he got it from Travis. Becky tells his brother to stop and that there is something really weird going on. They all pile back into the car and Tobin watches the window as he anxiously waits for the car to start. Becky tells Cal to turn back and take Tobin to Topeka. Travis, still trapped within the field, smiles and collapses on the ground. He knows that Becky and his baby are safe and sound. With this, he takes one final look at the sky and closes his eyes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe.